Hello everyone, and welcome back. My name is Descartes, and this is episode 2 of my Game Dev Tycoon Let's Play. Alright, so last episode we, we finished right when we were about to create a new game. Um, we had just finished developing our custom game engine. So with this new game, I think, I, yeah, the TES is done. So I want to try, well, I wanted to try developing for it, but man, it looks like it's not very good for these Hmm, for the genre matches. So maybe I should try this guy. Let's see, market share 17%, 21, 28, and 32% though. Man, yeah. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the TES. Oh, 80 grand to acquire a license. Uh, I don't know if I should. That's a lot of money. That's going to take me down to 60K just to start. No, I can't do it. Darn it. I don't have enough cash for that because I, I have my custom engine now that's going to cost me a little bit more. Um, so let's go ahead and do the G64 because we, if nothing else, maybe we find out the RPG settings on it and whether it's going to be good for it. Um, so let's do our wizards and RPG. Um, wow, it's only a good combo? For wizards, you would think that would be great. Um, what's Doctor um, and RPG? No, we don't know. Doctor Simulation? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I'm starting to second guess. I was planning to do an RPG. You know what? Let's just do Wizards RPG. Even though it's only a good combo, um, it'll get us going. Because we are using our custom engine, it should be uh, make us a little bit more money on our sales. All right, so what would a wizard... Um, hmm. Alakazam. All right, so we want to upgrade the graphics on it. Okay, so gameplay is pretty important. Story, quest seems very important, and engine's not. All right, now we can pick these things out of our engine. Increases the cost, but should mean the game sells for a little bit better. We're up to 370 fans. Woohoo! All right. Um, dialogue important. Level design. We'll crank that up. And AI. Let's let's leave it down there. Okay, world design, yes. Graphics, pretty good. Sound, yeah, I'll just leave that. Uh, hopefully this turns out good. Boy, look at all these bugs. Yikes. Alright. Come on, bugs. Go away. Okay. Phew. Alright, released with zero bugs. That's always good. New records on both those. That's good. All right, let's try Alakazam. Come on, reviews. All right. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'll take that. Three eights and a seven. Phew, we needed that. We need the money. Okay, so let's generate a report. I agree with that statement. I love games that come with the TES, and playing with a controller is so much more fun than a keyboard. I, I say that as I'm sitting here in front of my computer playing on my PC with my keyboard and mouse. <laughs> Our post-release release analysis of Alakazam is complete. Artificial intelligence seems to be not very important. Platform genre match is good. All right. So that's kind of what we wanted to find out on the G64 thing. All right, good deal. So let's do a little research here. We we kind of need some more topics, but we could also research some uh, some better better things for our next engine. But I think new topics is going to be more important. Um, let's do a war game. We can make that a strategy. What's our see if we look at our game history? Alakazam, our last game we did. 
cost us 66k um and it's already made us 124k so far so 58k profit um and that's still going up we're still in the middle of selling it so that's good um but what i wanted to look at is uh that's a role playing game then before that we had an adventure game before that we had a simulation game so we haven't done a strategy game yet so this war will be good i think uh, we'll do a war strategy. I imagine that'll be a good one. Surprise hit with players. The developer is fairly new to the gaming industry, but we cannot wait to see what they'll develop next. Hopefully something good that makes me money. All right. I got my new topic. Let's create a new game. So topic, we already know we're going to try war. I think strategy is probably a good idea for that. So we don't know about strategy games on the the TES, but my guess is they're not going to be that great. But they do have a, a pretty high market share, and I have the money now, I think, to pay the development cost. Um, strategy is really good on PC, though, but they only have 21% market share. That's where I'm struggling. Um, you know what, maybe we'll find out about the strategy. So we'll use this as an item of discovery almost that hopefully we'll unlock this and know exactly. Um, so yeah, pay the money. Oh, that hurts. All right, but we're going to use our game engine. And it's a strategy war game. So let's call this um, Battle for... Sandar. I have no idea. Well, you know what? That looks better. Battle for Xandar. I have no idea. <laughs> Just Xandar. I know I've heard that from a movie or something, I'm sure. All right. Start development. So when your guy gets faster, you can be developing a game while another game is still selling. And you, sometimes you can pop up and you'll actually have two games on the market being sold at the same time. Um, which is great because any downtime you have where the game's not being currently sold, all you're doing is spending money. So it's like that's your lost time. So if you can keep it so that there's always a game being sold, that's great. But you need to speed up your development before that happens. Because as you can see right here, my Alakazam game is already getting getting low. Um, okay, so gameplay is important. Story quest, not so much. Engine seems pretty important. So that's the nice thing about this game is um, uh, with like this stuff down here and it's generating those game reports. Every time you play this game, you gain more information so that the next time you play, you're probably going to do a little bit better. And you could, you could argue and say that that's the case for any game because you learn how to play it. But this has, not only did you learn how to play it, so you're going to be better at that, but you're also gaining this information on what combos are good and bad and stuff like that and, and you know, what levels these should be at. So it's kind of a twofold thing. I really enjoy that. Um, it gives the game a lot more replayability. Quit scratching your head, developer. Ooh, Itara announced their first platform. They called it Itara 5200. All right. Oh, I, very, I miss the joystick. Um, I'm dating myself a bit here, but man, I really loved using a, a, just the standard joystick with one button on the old Atari. I think part of it was the um, they were so robust. You could just really crank on them, and they, they did pretty well. All right, while you were working on your game, someone knocked on the door of the garage. It was a man who wanted to sell you a vacuum cleaner. Do you want to buy the vacuum cleaner? Um... I'm going to ask him to leave. Hey, I'm back, is what the guy said. This time he convinces you to buy the vacuum cleaner. Bye-bye, $4,000. Oh. <laughs> huh. I've never seen that event. <laughs> what a jerk. Cost me $4,000. bucks. All right, so sounds a little more important. Graphics aren't. Put scratch in your head.
Alexam's now off the market. It sold and made me 248k. All right. More specialized games. Some platforms become more popular with younger gamers, while others cater for the more mature age groups. All right. As more and more developers enter the market, we expect developers to focus their games on specific age groups to really make an impact. All right, so now I can have the ages. New research, target audience. So that might help sales. Boy, look at how low these numbers are. Yikes. I wonder why. I feel like that's like, it's like half of what it normally is. Yikes, this might not be a good game. He scratched his head too much, the big jerk. Oh, and I had to deal with the dude, the vacuum cleaner salesman. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. It's actually a little bit better than I expected. All right, so let's generate a game report because we kind of wanted to see how uh, strategy was going to go on this. So hopefully this will give us that info. Vina, another Japanese company, is planning to release a home gaming console on their own. Quit scratching your head. Oh, that's so frustrating. I'm like, work, damn it, work. <laughs> Our post-release analysis of Battle for Xandar is complete. War and strategy is a terrible combination. What? Oh, that seems crazy. Uh, it mu they must be thinking war is in first-person shooter style. All right, engine seems to be quite important for this type of game. Platform genre match is bad. All right, so we did gather some helpful information, so that's good, even though the overall wasn't a very good um, setup for us or release for us. But now we can do target audience. All right, new platform out, but I don't care about that quite yet. See, like right now, as soon as Battle for Xandar goes off the market, I'm just losing money. So right now I'm barely making sales and fans. All right, I'm gonna do some more research though. Um, I have a little bit of cash, but I wanna, I wanna keep this sort of stuff happening because when I create a new engine, I need stuff to put in that engine. So I need to start periodically researching the new technologies. Today, Vina has confirmed recent rumors about a new gaming console announced, the Master V. The company claims the Master V is a technically superior to the massively successful TES and plans to release it in the coming months. So that's the Sega clone. But let's see when this... Yeah, see, 8K monthly costs. I only made 1.8K in sales, so I'm losing money now. But I made 163k off of that game. I'm surprised. All right, so I am losing money. However, um, I, I need to develop a game and, and start making some money back. So let's see. First of all, I did a strategy game last, and before that was a role-playing game. So I need an action simulation, something like that. All right, so let's develop a new game. Now I have choices for age groups. So let's pick our topic. Um, I don't want to do war again because I just did it. Let's do our werewolf. It's weird that it has a zero because I, I created werewolf role-playing game right off the bat. Uh, we haven't done a doctor game yet. Let's do doctor. Um, I want to say simulations probably. I'm just thinking... Literally, like, in the real world right now, games based on doctors or simulation games, like your theme hospital or your uh, surgeon simulator. Um, I'm going to try it. Um, a doctor game for everyone. All right, so I don't know about the age for the TES, but a simulation is not that great. But it still has the highest market share. Oh, man. Let's do it. Maybe we'll find out about the everyone. I'm taking these gambles, and it's costing me money. 
All right, so let's call this Surgery Man. All right, so gameplay and then, all right, that seems pretty good. Stop writing on your pad. Stop scratching your head. Just code. All right. Move this down a little bit. Look at this old PC I've got. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's taken me so long, is it takes so long to compile anything on that old piece of junk. All right. Let's try this. But see, look at this. Last time I was at 10 and 11 on these numbers. That's crazy. Yeah, now I'm 18, 16. Ooh, my 2D graphics leveled up. All right. Come on, get... Oh, the, the Sega Mina. All right, come on, reviews. Come on, give me something. Yeah. Man, I am doing poor. I need more eights and nines. Well, let's generate that game report. And we'd kind of given up and just wanted to find out how simulation was going to do on this anyway. Doctor and simulation is a great combination. That's good. We didn't find out about the um, everyone, the age group for the Nintendo. All right. Now let's see. Research another. Uh, let's do Wild West. And then we'll develop another game. See, it's like, even though we're not getting that great of reviews, I think because we're developing for the TES that has the biggest market share, we're actually still selling okay. So let's do develop a new game. We want to try the Wild West this time. Everyone seemed to be its best. Oh, I don't know about youth and mature. Ooh. Um, role playing? Yeah. And let's do, actually, let's do Youth Wild West Role-Playing Game. And we will call it, um, it's for kids. So, Saddle Frenzy. All right, now hopefully... Um, even though role-playing game's not great, we did get a great combo between Wild West and RPG. So hopefully that'll increase sales. But I'm hoping that putting making it a youth game on the TES, which was good for youth, will also generate good sales. That's my, my hope. Did we just do a, an RPG not too long ago? Eh. The Wizards one? Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have done an RPG. All right, so level design, let's put that there, this down, pump that sucker up. I do like it. It's interesting to me, though, because it's almost as if I'm, I'm more pushed to try different combinations of games and ages and platforms to discover that information when I do the game um, uh, research or whatever at the end so that later I, I have that info, you know, it's, it's kind of a weird, it's less about making money and more about discovering these sorts of things. So I know for sure world design's extremely important for an RPG. Graphics are here. Although I'd swear that last time we did the RPG, we had all the info on all of them. And this time we had some question marks. Hmm. Might be the combo might be specific to Wild West RPG that that's where you discover instead of just RPG. Eh, I don't know. Let's see. All right. 
Um, decent numbers on that. All right, story quest leveled up. New research available, collectibles and simple cutscenes. All right, let's just start some research then. Um, cutscenes. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, that's better. All right. They like those uh, RPGs. So hopefully I sell a ton. Casual games. Simple cut scenes done. Seems to be slowly losing market share against other PC manufacturers. That's right, because you suck. The company has been unsuccessful in introducing higher priced computers to compete against newer and more advanced PCs. That's right. So in other words, stop developing for those guys. All right, let's generate our game report for Saddle Frenzy. Very positive reviews. Outstanding game. If DGD continues to innovate like this, they might become a new fan favorite. Yeah, I'm up to 1.4K fans. Yeah, suck it. Other developers. Gameplay seems to be quite important for this type of game. You think? Jeez. Okay. Um, let's do another quick researched of a topic um, let's do this well, that would point and click is going to be a casual what I haven't haven't done that cycling might be more like motor motocross where I could do an action game yeah let's do it just to get some more categories yeah company sales record with 50k units yes look at that i'm up to 468k all right making money quit scratching your head dude though that's the end of our time so i'm gonna go ahead and save it really quick and then we'll pick up from here in the next episode all right today ninvento has announced that they will introduce a portable gaming device called gameling the device comes with changeable game cartridges, a monochrome screen, a green keyboard, built-in speakers, and even multiplayer support via a connection cable. Oh, green background, I said keyboard. I was like, what? Um, all right, ooh, multiplayer support. Yeah, so a little, that thing's gonna be a bigger thing. GameLean is underpowered, but given the lower cost and excellent portability, it might find a huge following. All right, so I'm going to save it. Research has been completed. So I'm saving my game and then uh, going to go ahead and end the episode here. So if you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. And if you haven't subbed yet, click the subscribe button. Take care.